so moving on, uh, I'm very, very happy to uh, welcome Henri Helvetica uh, to uh, talk about moving pictures today. Henri is coming from Vancouver, Canada, uh, and he grew up in France. Uh, he can be found contributing back a lot to the community. He hosts and organizes the Toronto Web Performance Group Meetup, the Jamstack Toronto uh, also, and organizes a few events on the side because this, this uh, isn't enough. So re recently, he organizes the uh, 11Ts, a series of uh, short talks about uh, 11T, which I had the pleasure to participate in, and also Image Ready, which will get really relevant uh, in a minute. Henry is also a runner, uh, and you can follow uh, his progress and many others uh, through the hashtag devs who run. So without further ado, here you go, Henry. Thank you very much. We love speed. You know, there's no way I couldn't start this without uh, a picture of some fine French engineering. So I hope you enjoy it. Bonsoir, Dom. As some of you know, who follow me on Twitter, I like to greet the Dom. Good morning, good afternoon. But I'm in France, and it's the evening, so it's bonsoir. Allô, je m'appelle Henri. Henri Alverica is my Twitter handle, so you can find me there if you have any questions. I'm from the greatest city on the planet, which is Toronto, Canada. And guess what? I love speed too. So let's have some fun. Moving pictures, that's the name of my presentation. It's a snapshot into the future of web media. Uh, because you know what? Changes are taking place within our viewport as we speak. So this talk is about those changes that are taking place and we're gonna get into some details. Now, just a reminder that my slides, you'll be able to get them. You'll see the address at the bottom left corner throughout every slide in this presentation. So let's go. Now. 2020. Now, 2020 was a pretty interesting year. I'm trying to think. Um, oh, yeah, there was a pandemic. Uh, but JavaScript also, it turned 25, so that was a big deal. Uh, but it was a big year for image formats. Uh, it's kind of like this inflection point that took place where changes were happening. It's like going from the Intel Mac to the M1. You're going to see exactly why. I believe that images tell a story. You could be the best writer like Moliere, uh, but you know how they say that images are worth a thousand words? Well, really good, really good images are worth a thousand and one words. They tell a fantastic story, like the thrill of victory. They also share the agony of defeat. But you know, when it comes to storytelling, I'll have to admit. I'm a bit of a raconteur, and I'm gonna tell my own story throughout this presentation, so let's go. My story, it starts on the internet. Surprise, surprise. Uh, but specifically, it starts February 1993 at the National Center of Supercomputing uh, Applications in Illinois, USA. That's where the engineers that put together Mosaic were actually having a conversation, and it went to something like this. I'd like to propose a new optional HTML tag, IMG. That was from Mark Andreessen, Thursday, the 25th of February, 1993, at 9.09, by the way. I like specifics. Images. Now, imagine that. Could you imagine the web without images right now? Well, actually, I have a picture of it. Yeah, very blank. But as I said, storytelling is almost impossible without images. It's almost inconceivable to see, to think of the web without images right now. But they also believed the same thing. And they figured that images would drive experimentation and potentially would drive the web forward as well. And web forward, I mean, forward the web went. So in, H in 1995, HTML 2.0 was introduced and with it came the image tag. And that was actually in November 95, which means that the image tag also turned 25. But when it comes to images and talking about the future of images, it's impossible to do it without doing a bit of a retrospective to look back to see what we've been working with this whole time. So let's do that. Things get going with the graphics interchange format or better known as the GIF. That's correct. I love grammar. So what is it about the GIF? Well, it was lossless, which made it very heavy. Transparency, obviously. Uh, I had 256 colors 
And of course, it had animation, the very thing that's keeping it around to this day. But guess what? The GIF is 33 years old. Then we had the portable network graphic, also known as the PNG, or some call it the ping, or some call it ping is not GIF. That's a backstory. Anyhow, another lossless format. So again, pings are very heavy. Came in two flavors, PNG8, PNG24. It had an alpha channel, which was very important at the time. So gradient transparency. And it does some animation, but I would definitely not recommend that at all. But also, it's 24 years old. We also had the scalable vector graphic also known as the SVG. I put a little asterisk right there. Why? Because it's the only non-raster format. Good and bad, but the very thing is that it can, be, it can be compressed, which was really good. It's scalable, it's great for logos, uh, icons, offered some transparency, and you also got some animation from that as well. But guess what? The SVG is about 20 years old. And finally, and almost lastly, the Joint Photographic Expert Group, or the JPEG. Now, finally, we had a lossy format, which made it extremely popular because it was then preferred as a format for the web. So we know, great for photos. It came in a couple flavors if you wanted alpha uh, channels. So you could get like a JPEG 2000 or JPEG XR. It's the absolute workhorse of the web. And that's why it's predominant and in greatest numbers on the web. But I hate to break it to you, the JPEG is almost 30 years old. And what happens when I think of all these formats, these four formats, I just think of the Rolling Stones. Why? Because these formats are old. The SVG, the PNG, the JPEG, and the GIF combined, do you know that they're 104 years old? Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that we are very comfortable with these formats. We've known them forever. In fact, they're so sort of commonplace. It's kind of like, uh, you know, metro boulot dodo. Like, we've done it. We've seen it. And it's like ongoing. But, um, you know, imagine this as well. These are formats that are probably as old, if not older, than some of the dev developers around today. So this is what they've known. So with age, what comes? Well, we do have some concerns. The codex, the congestion, because congestion comes down to sending the images down the wire. Um, we're using mobile phones, we're eating up bandwidth, and costs. Costs like page weight, costs like patents, but we're gonna get into that. So let's go. Let me start with this quote. The foundation of the whole internet is data compression. That's from Colt McCandless, a Google engineer. That is very important because um, here's another quote right here. Image compression is critical to digital photography. Without it, a 12 megapixel image would take 36 megabytes of storage, making most websites prohibitively large. And that's a Google AI quote. Now, you have to keep in mind that we're humans, correct? And we actually look for the best deal possible. We want the best image at the lowest cost. Now, cost might be like data, our data caps. Uh, cost might be, uh, say, to the cost to the mobile device. So essentially, we have computational costs, we have financial costs, and we're trying to cut those as much as possible, which is why when I look at this photo, it tells everything. Compression is a delicate mix of art and science. Too much art, well, basically, what I want to say, pardon me, too much art and not enough science, well, you end up with a fantastic photo, but it's probably a little too large and not being compressed. Too much science and not enough art, well, you end up with things like this, where it's so compressed, the art is no longer recognizable. So we have to look into a lot of different things. Bandwidth. Well, how does bandwidth come into it? Well, I'll tell you right now. The pandemic exposed some of the challenges. COVID-19 essentially showed us that we had to jump on the internet and do all the work and some of these failures start to show up because we start to work from home. We start to learn from home and we start to conference from home as well. Now, 
let's look at some data here from Fastly on some internet traffic that was released sometime last year at the height of the pandemic. You can see that the change in traffic was pretty much across the board. Internet traffic went through the roof. Download speeds also went down as well, pretty much everywhere except a couple um, uh, locations here. So there was a lot of activity online. Now, I'm, look, I'm gonna look at some data from the HTTP archive, a fantastic trove, uh, a fantastic collection of, of information. Now, in the last two years, you can see that the total image bytes per page were up, unfortunately. But, you know, these things tend to happen. If you look at some of this other data here, the total image requests per web page, they're down, which is, I guess, somewhat good news. But if you combine the two pieces of data, more image weight, less requests. Well, if you do the math, that's not good because essentially things are getting a little bigger. The images are getting bigger. Um, they have a lot more work to do and we have less time to do it. So let's keep going and look at some of these other details. Patents and royalties. Well, those are more costs. And you might think to yourself like, okay, how important is that? Well, do you remember Heath? A couple of years ago, Apple sort of, you know, got the internet buzzing. They're like, oh, we're working with this new format. Well, this never took off because it was bogged down by patents and royalties. And in fact, if you go back and look at some history, the PNG came about because of a GIF patent claim. So these are things that we've seen in the past and they can disrupt um, how things move forward. So that being said, the heath went nowhere. Now let's get back to the web. We're talking about the JPEG, the PNG, the SVG, and the GIF. These are formats that we now know are old. Um, but you know, when it comes to updates, you know the golden rule more or less. The quickest request is the one never made. All right. I think we all know that. I like to remix it and say, the smallest image is the one never requested. But unfortunately, we know that images are perfect for storytelling. They're part of our fabric right now. And it, it, it's impossible to talk about the future without talking about images. So let's talk about this future look like. Anyway. Well, the future has to look like smaller images, better codecs, you know, more efficient uh, resources that we can use. Now, seeing that images are the most abundant resource, they can provide the most abundant savings. I think we can agree with that. And seeing that the JPEG is the most abundant format, it will provide the most abundant savings as well. I think I, I can agree with that too. Well, since we're all in agreement, let's introduce the JPEG Excel. Now, you might think to yourself, what's that? I've never heard of it. Well, let me tell you. The JPEG Excel uh, was a, it was conceived after the Joint Photo Photographic Experts Group, the organization, put out a call for paper. Actually, it happened around the 25th anniversary of the JPEG. So it was actually a bit of a celebration as well. But they felt that a call for paper was needed and seven submissions uh, were made and two were selected. One was from the team that put out PIC and FWIF. Now, PIC was a project that Google had been working on to replace the JPEG, and FWIF, which is a, uh, stands for Free Universal Image Format, was something that Cloudinary had worked on. So they got together, put the team together, and they released, or at least they started to um, put together what would be the JPEG Excel. Now, why did they do that? Well, they wanted the ultimate web image format. And what did that include? Well, let's go through it. Alpha channel, of course, we needed those. Lossless. Now, I should put a little asterisk and maybe I can get into it in the Q&A because it's lossless, but it's not super, super lossless, but I'll get into details. It had animation. People love animation. Modern compression, that is an absolute P1 there. So that it had. High bit depth for great colors, legacy friendly. So it was essentially uh, reverse compatible, uh, universal in a sense that it would replace everything. So if you wanted the details from SVG, it had that, the GIF details, the PNG details, JPEG details, everything. 
it was all there and it would be responsive. And as I said, since it's we are in a mobile world, having a responsive image is absolutely a P1. But the most important part, or at least an important detail, it is royalty free. So you're not gonna run into the challenges that you had with the Heath or with the early days of the GIF. Now, I don't know if any of you watch the news, I do from time to time, but there was breaking news just about two weeks ago. The JPEG Excel um, basically has had its bitstream frozen. Now, what does that mean? It essentially means that the format is now ready to be uh, implemented into whether to app with whatever application is out there or uh, browsers that want to use it. Now is the time to start the uh, procedure to do so. So that's actually really good news. Why is this good news? Because right now the JPEG Excel support across the browser landscapes looks a little something like this. It's not the best right now, but we're also in the earliest days of the process. Only things work out. Now, let's talk about AVIF. Now, you may or may not have heard of it. It was buzzing a lot last year. Probably late, I'd say late summer, a lot of things did happen. Now, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's, it came from the AV1 video format. And that came from the Alliance for open media, a conglomerate of companies that want to put out royalty-free, patent-free uh, media. Now, uh, what is it about the AVIF that got all these people buzzing, all this attention? Well, let's talk about the details. Um, once again, 1.0, AVIF 1.0 anyways, was standardized in February of 2019. So this was very recently. But the AV1 file format, which is what that is, would provide eight 10 and 12 bit depth, which is great because that gave us as much as 68.7 billion colors. So that's going to be plenty for us. Lossy and lossless compression, also very good, uh, depending on what we need at the time. Obviously, modern compression, an alpha channel, HDR, so high dynamic range. Chroma subsampling would be available at 420, 422, and 444. For those familiar with it, we used to do a lot of 420 because it would reduce a little bit of data, but also still provide decent colors. But now we can go as up as, four, uh, as far as 444 for the full spectrum without worrying about um, image weight. Now, these are all great details, but again, Another fantastic detail is that, is that it's royalty free. Now I put in a little asterisk only because there are rumors that people are going to go after them for particular patent details, but for the most part, it is royalty free. Now, the one thing you have to know is that it is a fantastic format with great compression. A lot of companies have been experimenting, experimenting with it already, people at Netflix. And this is some of the details they actually had. So in comparing WebP, JPEG 2000, Heath, and AVIF, each and every time AVIF came in a little smaller. So these are things that are obviously very um, uh, exciting for the space. Now, let's look at AVIF support. So right now we have Opera desktop, Chrome desktop, and we actually have Firefox behind a flag on desktop and actually on Android. But as it is behind a flag, things tend to happen. And luckily, le 23 février, so next month, um, it is actually gonna go to stable. So basically, which is obviously great news, we are going to be able to have three full desktop browsers with AVIF support. Something you should note. Now, let's talk about the WebP. What about the WebP? Now, interesting, interestingly enough, the WebP as a newer format, it's kind of like, yeah, I guess so, but it's actually 10 years old. Um, let's look at some of the details. It was believed that the WebP was going to replace the PNG because sort of like feature for feature, it had some of the um, same details, but obviously came in a little smaller. Now, the one thing about the WebP is that Great compression, pretty aggressive, in fact. It had some animation, and believe it or not, um, animated WebP is being used by Tumblr today. Lossy and lossless flavor. 8-bit depth, 
So it was believed that the WebP didn't, or at least it was believed that images online didn't really need to go past eight bits. That was 10 years ago. Today, we obviously can do a little further, a little more, but the fact is that this is what was believed at the time. Transparency is going to be made available. 420 chroma subsampling. Again, at the time, we didn't believe that 422 or 444 was that necessary. But as I mentioned, it is a 10-year-old format. So it's not super old, but it's definitely not a, a new format either. And as I've said again, at the time, it believed that uh, this is a format that was made for the web. So that's why then people were very excited about it. Now, speaking of being excited, here's some exciting news. WebP support is across the board. From Edge to Opera right there, we have no problems with support whatsoever. Something to be expected for a format that's 10 years old. But there's one more thing. And guess what? Safari is supporting WebP, but there is a little flag right there. And the reason is it's on Big Sur or iOS 14. But that's still fantastic news. And that was actually announced mid-summer of 2020, which is why I say 2020 was very interesting. But believe it or not, and we're going to go through a little bit of history right here very quickly. Um, five, Almost five years ago, WebP was supported in Safari by mistake. Some people believe it was an engineer who got a little too excited, added support in, in, in Safari, and it got pulled two, three days later. Anyways, it was glad. I'm glad to see Safari come back. But let's get into some details with the WebP. Um, here's Toby, CEO of Shopify, who in 2019 announced that the Shopify platform was going to start to serve WebP because it was possible to do so back then. And in fact, here, uh, one of my favorite people around, Cornell Lusinski over at Cloudflare, Image Intelligentsia, uh, mentioned that this year in 2021, we would be able to use WebP across the board. He was actually joking here, but in a sense, he's not joking. You can do so. So this is to tell you that in 2021, it's pretty, I don't say it's impossible, but it's hard to actually talk about web performance without discussing or including the WebP because it's got fantastic support and is a relatively small and well-compressed format. Now, why is this all important? Well, I'll tell you why. Metrics. Metrics are the way we measure things online. And you know we've gone through um, some of the great metrics, say, at Google Lighthouse. Now, the one metric that I want to talk about is the LCP quickly, largest contentful paint. And the largest contentful paint when it comes to images, or at least bad images, are not good news. Let me give you a quick example. Now, imagine this. Um, 50K kilobytes of HTML, 80 kilobytes of JS, 20 kilobytes of um, CSS, a fast 3G connection, great server. If you want to get a great score on Lighthouse or LCP score on Lighthouse, which means that it has to load in under two and a half seconds, you're going to need an image size of 144 kilobytes or smaller. This is fantastic research that was provided by Patrick Hall, who's on the core team of Lighthouse. I'll be able to uh, provide a link to a talk that he gave about this. All that to tell you that that is not the easiest thing around, because quite often images are much larger than that, especially hero images. So that's why compression, new formats, smaller images are very important. What about tooling? Well, tooling has also been important because tooling can also inform the adoption of some of these newer formats. The early days of the WebP, tooling was very challenging, so people didn't care. Um, what does it look like then? Squoosh app, which is a Google project, has been doing a lot of great work here. It's a client-side um, compression app uh, application. Um, they support WebP. They support AVIF which they actually talked about uh, last CDS, Chrome Dev Summit, they actually support JPEG Excel as well, and I'll be able to show you that. Apps like GIMP, Photoshop, they made a, Google made a plugin um, to support WebP, uh, but unfortunately, that's it right now. Now, as I mentioned, 
Um, JPEG Excel is being supported by Squoosh right now. It is a little buggy from what I could, you know, last checked, but you could actually check the repo here for that. Now, another solution is CDNs. I know, I think Matthias uh, talked about that today at some point, uh, but CDNs like Akamai, uh, people like Cloudinary, Imagix, and so many others out there are doing the work for you as well. Now, most of them do uh, support WebP across the board. Some will support uh, uh, AVIF, uh, and I do know that I think Cloudinary supports a JPEG Excel, but since they're behind it, they're obviously, uh, they have the most interest into it. So, you know, they're probably leaders there. Now, we talked about the future. Let's talk about the future future very quickly. Believe it or not, there's a WebP2. And it's in very experimental phase right now, but I just want to let you know. Um, there's also an AV2. Again, that's far, far future future, but these are things that are being worked on, which means there might be an AV or AVIF2. I don't know. That's speculation, but the WebP2 is out right now. And you can actually see some of the details here. I'll be able to provide a link in my slides, uh, the experimental successor to the WebP format. And what they're trying to do is mirror some of the AVIF characteristics, the details, trying to bring themselves back, into, uh, back up to speed. In conclusion, um, we have the formats that we can use because you could actually create a situation where you have AVIF, WebP, if you need anything else, the JPEG. But with those three, you can create yourself multiple fallbacks and serve anything you want on the web. Now, we have the tooling somewhat. Um, we have the services, the CDNs out there. They'll do all the heavy lifting for you. So we're able to be as mindful as possible and create the smallest images possible as well. But as a last piece, a quick PSA, uh, I was the curator of a uh, series of talks on a web images and tooling. I did that last fall. It was called Image Ready. Uh, please, by all means, go watch the videos. Uh, very informative, including some of your compatriots, Pascal Massimino, who talked about WebP, uh, and he's in France, actually. But nonetheless, you'll be able to watch the videos. I hope you enjoyed that. I did it as quickly as possible. So, merci. Hi again. Oh, there I am. There I am. There Hi, I Henry. Am. How's it going? Up I'm there good. In, to home you, to not Vancouver. Sorry it, about that. It's all right. You know, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it was a surprise to me. I'm like, oh my god, I live in Vancouver. Let's go. <laughs> I, I had to to check on on Google. The distance between both cities is like three three thousand and three hundred kilometers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's <laughs> not close. So, but uh, no, man. <laughs> It's, um, but thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, thank you uh, to the whole team for having me. Uh, I had a great time. It, it was actually uh, a little bit better than I thought because I was having some weird lagging issues and, and I'm like, oh, it's not too bad. You know, uh, you know, I, I know I can do the robot, but you know, <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, man. Yeah. Right now you sound great and it's very, very stable. So hopefully we'll stay like that for the, for the Q and A. Uh, which we can uh, start and get into, maybe? Yeah, for sure. I, I saw a bunch of questions and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, maybe I can answer them in the chat. But I hate typing, I'll be honest. So uh, <laughs> I thought it'd be better to do it live. So, um, and on top of that, you know, people probably get to see me, you know. Uh, Always appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, no, there were some great questions, and I don't even know where to start. Um, I, I'm assuming you guys wrote them down, so yeah, uh, yeah. we can we can go through uh, some of them. I don't think yeah, we have please to them all. Uh, but the first one, I think it was from JP. I, I can't remember. Oh really yes, remember. yes. It's so, do you have information on the the JP consortium and the, the possible licensing issues? So you know, I I can't speak on some of the other projects that the consortium is is working on. Uh, obviously, anyone uh, who's listening can go to jpeg.org to sort of get some of the details, even though they may be sparse. But specifically on the JPEG Excel, um, one of the key mandates was the fact that it had to be patent free because they had experienced everything that had happened through the Heath 
And, you know, the heave is a real nightmare. It, there's some details online I could probably try to find and, and, and drop them in the Slack. Oui, je fais. It, it, it just, uh, it was very hard to sort of get anything going there. So uh, many believe as much as uh, Heath is a great uh, format, fantastic compression, but it just could not go anywhere because it was being weighed down by all the paperwork. So uh, that's why these things are very important. And JPEG Excel is like free and clear. Thank you for, for answering that. We can yeah. move to the the next one that I like. You in the talk you said a very intriguing you, very sentence. Start. Oh uh, yes, I remember the format. Yes, I think it was yes. AVEF, not yes, less, yes. plus less, but not super yes. less. So yeah, can you elaborate a bit on that? So I think I, I mentioned that about JPEG Excel, and what I meant to say, and I you know, uh, I wasn't elegant enough to mention it or to put it into words, but. Um, Part of uh, the compression uh, conversation is how much the eye can actually perceive, right? Uh, there, can, there comes a point where there's some details that the, uh, the human visual system will not be able to uh, differentiate, and we're essentially playing with that, all right? So at the very finest details, you can start to play around with some data that would essentially not make it a true lossless format, but it is perceptually lossless, which is what I really want to get into. And I felt like, you know, if I really got into the details, I would take up too much time, then I couldn't get into the rest of my talk. So that's essentially what I'm saying. So we're playing with the data to a point where it's perceived as lossless, but there actually is by raw definition, some lossy details mm -hmm. it's, so it's like I, it's like the the mp3 for mp3 for, for a month uh, kind of sound yeah yeah it, it's kind of like you know if someone says well they can hear the difference between a 320 and a wave i'll be like yeah right you know what i mean so uh it's uh that's it <laughs> cool thank you uh we can move to the next question from uh anthony um, so about the blocky look of heavily compressed JPEGs, could mm -hmm. you talk about the kind of compression artifacts that those newer format exhibit? You know, that's a really good question. And uh, I'd love to some, maybe come back and answer you there because there's some details about... So here's the interesting part about uh, formats in general. Uh, they have strengths and they have weaknesses, right? And um, the, the key to a decent format or a good format is can you sort of manage all the weaknesses and make them you know s still like a legitimate format so there are some, there are going to be some details that avif uh, or they have some shortcomings um, the jpeg excel may have some some mild shortcomings too depending on the situation and the same with the webp obviously you know so uh, it would be sort of uh, a short essay and i, I don't know if i could uh, give it any kind of justice and a quick answer, uh, but there are there are some details like I could point you to some uh, some documentation as well that I, I even read like recently uh, that people have these little arguments like oh well this is no good because it does this you know well if you zoom in a thousand times yeah you're probably going to pick up some 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 shortcomings as well so uh, but so Anthony I hope that wasn't like a bad answer but uh, I'll definitely be able to get you some more stuff ping me on Twitter for sure. Can you uh, remind everybody your Twitter handle? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, uh, Henri Helvetica. So I'll put it in the Slack again. Merci beaucoup. Oh, je vous en prie, je vous en prie. <laughs> we can move on to the uh, next question from uh, Maël. Mm -hmm. We have some browsers that begins to support those new formats, but what about the photo software to export them? So I love that question. So I personally believe that some of the problems that the WebP had in its 10-year rise was very much that. Uh, there wasn't a lot of support on the sort of tooling side, you know, so it's the like authoring side. So for example, uh, 10 years in, Photoshop is still not officially uh, supporting the format. There are some plugins available. Google had one, and there was actually an independent company before that that had one as well. 
So that being said, um, that is the hurdle. Now I will say squoosh, uh, which is, uh, it, it got mentioned, I think, uh, prior, uh, will be able to do that. Now squoosh is also available in a CLI flavor. All right. So, uh, which is really good. Um, uh, I'm trying to think here now with anything AVIF related, there are only a couple out there. I think I mentioned in the slide, uh, GIMP uh, does one. I can't remember if um, Image Magic does AVIF yet. I'll have to go back and check. Uh, but obviously, you're going to have um, WebP and Image Magic and, and a few others out there. And in fact, actually, I don't want to make this super long winded, but you're, we're starting to see. Um, uh, obviously, CDNs will do the heavy lifting for you. And we're starting to see some frameworks like Next.js or CMS is like Contentful, who will actually start to do some of the heavy lifting for you as well. So there is a bit of this modernizing of formats. There's also this modernizing of the workflow. And, you know, we're almost given this kind of like ab abracadabra kind of option of just going click. I'm just going to let this other company deal with it. You know, it's out of my hands. Thank you so much. Oh, by all means. Uh, I think we have time for a uh, for last one. Uh, uh, JP again. Okay. How do JPEG, Excel, and AVIF, so the two newest Google's cool kids on the on the block, now compare mm -hmm. on a large image basis? Mm, I'm trying to think. So, how do JPEG, Excel, and AVIF now compare on large image basis? I'm not sure if I got that right. Like. Uh... Uh, as a like a quality, uh, maybe GP, you can jump into the the stream right now. You're, you're a click away. <laughs> yeah, by all means. Um, a JP, GP, I don't know. Oh, he disappeared. He didn't want to stay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> eh, Miss Copal, yeah, your microphone. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, your microphone is, yeah. <laughs> so I think, I think uh, you already mostly answered it. Uh, it's uh, about compression, uh, comparing JPEG Excel versus AVIF uh, to know which one compresses the best uh, on a typical photographic image. Uh, okay. So, so far, there is a bit of an argument there. Uh, but so far, some people feel that uh, it might be a JPEG Excel story here. Um, simply because, I mean, we, and I think someone mentioned this in the Slack, you know, you have to remember that WebP and um, AVIF uh, actually come from like uh, video. And, you know, that's the one thing that the people working on the JPEG Excel want to make sure they dealt with because as much as, you know, there are opportunities for WebP and AVIF to be worked online as a video, as a, a image format. You know, um, the the compression and and the sort of codecs that be, that I'm sure they've they've worked towards with the JPEG Excel made it, uh, you know, uh, extremely uh, it, their work was thorough. And uh, you know, from time to time, you'll see a, p a few people uh, sort of like. Uh, uh, advocate for the JPEG Excel online because they know it's a really good format. Uh, they just don't have the support yet. Now, that being said, um, I will get back to the idea that, you know, we do want some high fidelity on the internet. That's without a doubt. Uh, and that's the reason why, again, you know, we're happy that we have lost these formats online, but we're also happy that we're able to go like 444 on, on the chroma subsampling because before that would have been like the images a little too big. Um, that being said, we're still working on the net and there is going to be a sort of like perceptual lossless element to it. Uh, you know, do we need 68.7 billion colors? I'm not certain, but we're able to do it, you know? So that being said, um, I think the biggest challenge really is going to be, you know, can we get the support, right? Um, and uh, JPEG Excel is at the very start of their journey. Uh, the bit uh, the bitstream was frozen just two weeks ago, 
So that means like now people can start to look at it. It's like, okay, can we start to implement this into our browser? Because you have to remember, AVIF, for all the excitement that people have for it, you know, they've had like a two-year head start, you know. Um, and, you know, WebP, for all somewhat of the excitement people had, you know, it's been around 10 years, but it's only in the last two years that the major browsers have come along. So uh, Edge came in uh, fall of 2018. Uh, Firefox came in in 2019 in January, and uh, let me see, uh, Safari came in in fall of 2020. So it's been two years to get like the last three major browsers after Chrome got in in like 20 whatever 11, right? So, um, you know, I hope that answered your questions, JP. Like I know I kind of ran in circles a bit, mm -hmm. and maybe you stopped paying attention, so it it, it was fine, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> <Love here. laughs> exactly. exactly, exactly. He's like, I don't know what he's talking about. I'll just shake my head. But, um, but, yes, uh, but yeah, yes. you know what? It, it's, uh, it's going to be, I, I think we really need to look at things like a year from now or maybe two and to see what happens because, um, nothing's going to move until browsers sort of start to implement it and you know sometimes implementation on browsers is arduous work so it's kind of like we're going into this new sort of like you know moment in history because like i said we've had like jpeg for 30 years the gif for 33 years the the, the png for 20 and, and whatnot so they've not had to really do any of this work in a long time and now you know the screens are demanding it people are starting to demand it and uh, we'll see what happens well, thank you very, very much, Henry. Thank you. For, uh, oh, ça m'a fait plaisir. Response. You know, I, I, uh, I know maybe uh, another day I might be able to do this in French with you guys, but I was just so nervous. <laughs> well, in France, maybe for the next edition, if you want to to pass by. Absolument, ça me ferait plaisir. Parfait. Et puis, really uh, question, dernière, dernière question. Uh, la caméra de Steph, what is that? Because it's really, it's, it's really this, nice. This is just, <laughs> this is just a, a digital camera, a Canon EOS. So okay. with a um, big, big, big lens. And, okay. Uh, it's very cool. I mean, I was going to say, uh, you know, that looked like an AVIF picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no... No uh, algorithm, uh, no digital uh, compression on, on it. Oh, so you're really this handsome. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> as long as we know that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, uh, we're going to uh, to move to the French conclusion of this uh, event. Uh, again, thank you very, very much, Henry. And uh, see you around. Merci, merci. See Ça you.